In case you haven't figured it out by now, I absolutely love Christmas. So back in August, I started watching these clean decorate with me Christmas videos of people decorating their houses for Christmas. And I watched hours of these while I sat and crocheted. But anyways, I came across this video where this lady had these really pretty milk jug style bottles with Christmas phrases on them. And as they do in these style of videos, they explain here's where they got it from, here's how much it was. And I wanna say it was something like 30 bucks for a set of three and she was super excited about it. And Awesome for her, but I don't know. I just felt like I could probably DIY something similar for a little bit cheaper. So today I'm gonna show you the budget option of how to make some cute little festive Christmas jars with phrases on them, using some empty Starbucks jars, a little bit of paint, and a really fun way to transfer images. So let's get started on this project. Here are the aforementioned Starbucks jars. I have two sizes and I held onto the lids at first because I wasn't sure if I was going to incorporate those, but I don't end up using them. I used a razor to remove the labels, used the most wonderful product ever, Goo Gone, to remove the sticker residue, and I washed the outsides and insides of the jars clean. Once the jars are dry and clean, I'm going to put two coats of chalk paint on the jars. I'm using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in White, which I picked up from Hobby Lobby, but I'm pretty sure a few other stores also stock this brand. I could be wrong. To paint the jars, I rigged up this weird setup where I stuck skewers into a piece of foam and set the jars on the skewers, but you could do something similar with an upright towel holder from Dollar Tree to hold the jars while you paint them. And then as far as painting goes, I'm a pretty sloppy painter with most of my projects, which might not be the best for chalk paint because it tends to show the paint strokes more, but that's why I'm doing two coats and why I'm using long strokes down the entire length of the jar. One other note on the chalk paint. We are going to use the same chalk paint to transfer an image from paper later on, and I don't know if this technique works with all chalk paints. I spent a lot of time researching and testing different ways to transfer images, but the method that intrigued me the most I found in a video that I will link in the description. In that video, the lady uses Annie Sloan brand chalk paint to transfer her images. So based on her video and others in the comments, Annie Sloan chalk paint works for this method. I can also confidently say this method works with the folk art home decor chalk paint I'm using. So I'm not sure if it works with any chalk paint, but it for sure works for these two brands. If you find other brands that end up working, please share in the comments. Also, this method should work with other colors besides just white. So if you want a different background color, that's an option. I would stick with lighter shades though, so your image transfer will show up clearly with good contrast. A final note on the paint. One two ounce bottle was enough for me to put two coats of paint on my three jars and to transfer three images. Now that that's all out of the way, I finished putting on my two coats of paint and let them dry. Then it was time to create my design. You could use Word, Google Docs, or something similar to create your designs. I opted to use Canva because it's so intuitive to use and they have lots of great graphics. Now I just use the free version because it has everything I need, but if you do sign up for Canva, be sure to use my link in the description below because we will both get a credit for a free premium graphic on the site. Another good thing about Canva is because it's so popular, there's tutorials for how to do basically everything on there. So if you get in there and say you aren't sure how to change font size, you can Google how to change font size on Canva and you'll find a walkthrough. So anyways, I created my design on Canva, but there's one more thing we need to do. We need to flip our image so when we transfer it ends up facing the correct way. If you're using Canva, you will first create your design, then download it, then re-upload it as an image, and then flip the entire image that you re-uploaded. Again, if you can't figure out how to do any of those steps, a quick Google search will find you the answers. I made a black and white version and a color version of my designs because I wasn't sure which I wanted, but I ended up using the color prints. If you want to use the same design I'm using instead of creating your own design, these graphics will be available on my blog. You can save the picture from the article and print it out with toner. So now it's time to print, and this is another very important step. We need to print with toner, not ink. Now at home, I normally use my parents' inkjet printer, which is great, but it won't work for the transfer method because the image will smear. So if, like me, you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars to buy a toner printer, the affordable option is to use staples, yay! Or you can use FedEx Office or Office Depot if they're still around, whatever you want. The important thing is to check that they print with toner. When I was placing my order online with Staples, I couldn't find anything that said one way or another if they use toner, but when I called the store, the staff were super helpful and confirmed that their store uses just toner, never ink. Since Staples is a bit of a drive from my home and I didn't want to have to place a second order if I didn't successfully transfer the first time, I decided to order two copies of my design and I went with the cheapest, thinnest paper option because it will make the transfer process a little easier. 
I also paid the extra 34 cent fee for express pickup because I was going to be right by the store for a doctor appointment and didn't want to be out all day waiting on a print job. But even with the exorbitant splurge of rushing the order, it came out to only like a buck 55 for the two pages and was ready for pickup about 30 minutes after I placed my order. Some additional quick notes about my prints. I should have left more space between the images. That would have made transferring a little bit easier. But more importantly, put some extra little graphics on your page that you can use for a test run. The steps for the transfer technique are very simple, but it's easy to second guess yourself and mess up the first time or two you give it a try. So including extra graphics to do as a test run is a great idea. Now that our jars are painted and we have our toner prints, it's time for the fun part, finally transferring the images. Now, I gotta be honest, my best transfer is the one I did off camera because the other two I lined up way off center, but that's okay, I'm just gonna roll with it. Here is how we transfer the image. I started by cutting out the graphic I wanted on my jar and I left a good bit of paper around the image. I also rounded the corners because I think it helps the end result blend in with the jar just a little bit better. Then I used my same chalk paint to paint the section of my jar where I wanted the graphics. The trick here is to add a thick enough layer of paint for the image to transfer, but not so thick that it won't dry and end up with a bunch of air bubbles. Also very important, make sure the paint extends all the way beyond the size of your graphic. If any spots are missing fresh wet paint, the image in those spots won't transfer. And really, you're not going to mess this step up, it's going to work for you, but it can be helpful to do a few trial runs to build your confidence in this method and really see how it works. Once we have a consistent layer of paint, it's time to add the graphic. You want to place it toner side against the wet paint and try to do a better job lining things up than I did. Once it's in place, we need to smooth out all the air bubbles. I just used my fingers to make sure all the toner areas were firmly against wet paint, but don't press down too hard or the paint will dry with ridges in it from the pressure. Another thing that would probably help is to use a credit card to smooth out air bubbles. I obviously didn't want to film my credit card and post it online, but I had saved a gift card for projects like this, except I couldn't find it until like two hours after finishing this project. Go figure. Anyways, after my print was on the wet paint, it's time to let it dry. You'd probably be okay to let it dry for 24 hours, but I let mine sit for about 36 just to be on the safe side. If you move on to the next step and your paint isn't completely dry, the transfer won't stay. So the big takeaway here is let the paint dry completely. And then once it's dry, it's time for the grand reveal, which is also a little bit tedious. You can fill a spray bottle with water or use a damp sponge like I'm doing, but the basic idea is to wet the paper to soften it and then rub it off. You might remember how I said to use cheap thin paper, this is why. When wetting the paper, try not to drench the paper so that water is dripping. The chalk paint is water soluble, so technically if you add too much water, it can cause the chalk paint itself to lift off the bottle and we don't want that. But don't be scared to get the paper pretty damp, the paint will hold up pretty well. Now as I rub the paper off, it's curling up and we see the design starting to appear. However, this is just the top layer of paper and this is also the easier part. The harder part is getting that bottom layer of paper off. When things are all said and done, there won't be any paper left but it can be hard to tell when you're down to just the paint. So again, some practice transfers aren't a bad idea just to get familiar with the process. If you think all the paper is gone but you weren't sure, let the jar dry. If it looks cloudy on top of your image, that means there's more paper to rub off. Another tip to getting the paper all the way off is to rub very forcefully in the areas that are blank. That way you don't have to worry about rubbing your design off, but you can rub all the paper away and get a feel for what it's like when it's just paint left. Then slowly and gently work across the print itself to remove that last bit of paper. If the paper gets too dry, you can always spray it again or dab it with a sponge to make it damp again and easy to remove. Now, I like to be transparent in my tutorial, so just want to give a heads up that it took about a half hour to remove all the paper from just one jar. So there definitely is a bit of a trade-off for making these instead of buying them. They're a lot cheaper, but they take more time. So as with all of my Christmas DIYs that take some time, I highly suggest turning on a Christmas movie or listening to some Christmas tunes while you work, so that way the process is festive and enjoyable and not a chore. Hopefully from these clips you can get an idea of what it looks like as I remove the paper. Until you try it yourself, it's a little hard to know exactly what to expect and how to tell if there's any paper left, but hopefully this sets you in the right direction. Another thing to note at this stage is your transfer might not end up perfect. Mine certainly aren't. The biggest cause of imperfections is air bubbles. If there's any air bubbles, the rubbing motion will burst the bubble and chip away the paint in that section. If the air bubble is under the print, that section of the image will be blemished. So you can see some gaps on the transfer on the little swirl and on the letter E. 
Personally, I don't mind the transfers because one, they're barely noticeable, and two, it gives it a weathered yet refined kind of look. If the gaps really bother you, you do have a couple options. The first option is to repaint the jar and attempt the transfer a second time with your extra print. Or a simpler option is to fill in the gaps with a sharpie. It's not a perfect match and the sharpie ink ends up a little shinier than the toner, but it's not a bad option. As you work to remove the paper, it's also a good idea to work over a trash can for this step. You will end up with a lot of paper debris as seen on my table. One final thing I want to point out about this method is typically this is used to cover an entire surface. Since we aren't covering the entire jar with paper, that means we will end up creating an edge to our paint. This is the only part of this project that bugs me, so I played around with some different options. I tried putting less pressure on the paper at the edges when doing the transfer, but that really didn't make much of a difference. Then I tried sanding down the ridge, which smoothed it out a little bit, but the change wasn't really worth the effort to me. So I finally decided to leave it be, and once I put these out as decorations, I realized the edge wasn't that noticeable. So it all works out in the end. Here is the Noel jar with the paper removed, and hopefully you can see how the surface looks once it's smooth and clear of paper. I repeated the process with my remaining piece jar, and then my transfers were complete. At this point, you can use the jars as is as decor pieces, but I wanted to give mine a little more pizzazz, so I used my miscellaneous Christmas decor trinkets to spruce up the jars. I took a bit of twine, tied a jingle bell on each end, and fastened it to the top of the joy jar. For the peace jar, I took a pipe cleaner and a gift tag that I saved from another gift because it's just so cute, and I attached it to the top of that jar. And for the Noel jar, I added some ribbon and a bow. Another idea that I think will look really pretty with these is to stand some tall Christmassy picks up inside the jars, but I didn't have any on hand to try out that look. But as they turned out, I think these are so cute and I love how this method allows me to customize my design. If we compare these to the $30 jars that inspired this project, my total cost for this project was right around 4 bucks. My sister bought the coffees and gave me the jars, so those are free for me. Then the paint was just over $2 when she read tax, and the print job was under 2 bucks, so it works out to about $4 for me. We do have to consider the time, which altogether was under 2 hours, so overall, I'd say not too bad. I'd love to hear if you make these jars and how this project goes for you. Also keep in mind, you don't have to stick with just Christmas themes. You can make these for other holidays by changing out the words, paint colors, and graphics. Or instead of holiday decor, you could pick out some colors and images that match your home decor style and leave them up all year long. Whatever you decide, I hope you have fun with this project. Happy crafting! Okay, video's almost over, but the whole printing thing reminded me of a bad joke, as in super corny, from my childhood. Here it goes. What did Snow White say while waiting for her pictures to develop? Someday my prince will come. <laughs> okay, but on that note, do they technically even develop prints anymore since it's all digital? Wouldn't you just get your pictures printed, not developed? I don't know, maybe the joke doesn't work anymore.